welcome back all of you nana here and then uh, we are into the balanced topics of order management actually so let us now go there and then have a look at it <clears throat> So we are going to begin our activity on this. So let me begin first of all on the laptop kit actually. So first of all, I will now show you the laptop carry case and warranty, which contributes to the components of a laptop kit actually. So let me go on and query this laptop. So I will now uh, go there. So I will now go to the product management and then I go to the product information management. And then let me query the laptop. So the laptop is a simple item <clears throat> wherein I have made what a price of ten dollars for this actually. So if you go there, click on it. Now go to the browse information. Browse items and then query. So this item is a billable and, and shippable also. Let me search. It's basically billable and shippable. On the bottom, on the child dog, if you want to query, 001 is a child dog, on which I look at the laptop. And then we'll have a look at the attributes of this one. We'll go to the specifications and look at the attributes. If you go to the specifications and look at the sales and order management. So this item is basically uh, what? It's a shippable as well as invoice of loss. And then remember, it is not back to back anywhere. Whereas if you go and then query the next item is a carry case. Carry case is just shippable and then it is not billable. So it's a free item. So whenever the customer buys the laptop, he will be given the carry case free. Yet. So it is only shippable. <coughs> go there. So go to the specifications and have a look at it. So carry case is only shippable. It's a shippable, fine, but it is not invoiceable actually. In more than less meters. So this is on the one. And then the extended warranty. You know, that, you know, see the extended warranty. So extended warranty is not shippable. It is only billable. It is the reverse of the carry case actually. It is the reverse of this. <coughs> so click on the specifications. So once when you are creating an item only as a billable, so the first activity which you have to do is what? We have to disable the internally transfer make the internal transfer as no and then no, then make the shippable as no. So if you don't do this, if you make it as yes, and then afterwards you make it as no, it will never allow you at all to make it change to no at all. When the first activity is to make internal transfer no, the internal orderable must be no, then you have to make the shippable as no. And that is the order of doing. So if you do in the reverse order, it will not work at all. Okay. And then it is invoiceable. Extended warranty is invoiceable actually, but it is not uh, shippable actually. So like as. Now we'll now have a look at the kit actually. Now have a look at the kit. Laptop kit. We are going to have a look at it now. Right? So click on the kit. Mama, oh, I'll bring you upon me. So go there. Click on the laptop kit. So it's a kit item. So I have applied the template of kit actually. It is a kit item. So once it is over there. And then if you go to the structures, you click on the structures. I created the structure now. If you click on the primary, it has got three components of it. It has got three components. A kit has got what? Three components. Fine. It has got a laptop, 15, 16, and 17 of the three components. Laptop carry case and external warranty are the components of a kit actually. Then afterwards, what I did is I made the all items prices $10. All items price has been made as ten dollars. <throat> I will not show you the pricing. Since I am working on a vision, I am going to use the corporate <coughs> segment price list as my price list actually. So from that, I will not show you the price. So here it's I can show the price. I click on the home icon. Go there. Go to the order management, and then we go to the pricing administration. And then we'll now have a look at the price. Okay. We have got corporate price segment price is the one which I'm using in order to it. So I'm go there, click on it. I will now go to the all items price. And then line type is buy. And then if you make a query, I have made two units of measures prices. One is what the each 
capital E small e, that is going to be ten dollars. And then for the dozen, I have made it as a hundred dollars. For the dozen is hundred dollars. For the each, it is ten dollars. So that is what I have made from this. And then uh, they have made some uh, miss on the what happens on your uh, uh, do now. Fine. So I created my own line type. So click on search now. Manage order lookup. I created a what's called a yeah, lookup now. In this place, I created a lookup. I click on search. So it's a worry do percentage line percentage. Click on search and there will be plenty becoming. So here is the one. So on this, I made one line type called generic process. I made a line type for generic process. So on the line type, I made a ORA DO line type as a generic process. I made it now. And then afterwards, I went to this navigation to manage percentage. Fields percentage. And then you go to the manage process assignment rules for this thing. I created a rule here. A generic process rule. If you click on it. And then click on the actions and then go to edit. Click on it. And you can see. If the line type is going to generic process, then the process name is set to DO order fulfillment generic process. So I made this rule. So on the sales order line, I will be doing it. So let us now go there and then create a sales order direct. When there's a change that I made now. So let us now go there and then create a sales order. So go to the manager orders. So go there. I will now create what your sales order. <clears throat> so let us now create a sales order for this uh, what's called your laptop kit actually. Make a sales order for the laptop kit. It's not happening here, which so. so let me go to the home icon. And then go on and create our sales order directly. <clears throat> so let me create an order <clears throat> for the laptop kit. Right, drop it down and go there. So choose the years one business unit. And then it is computer service and handles the customer actually computer service and handles and putting it up so let me go there and then take a copy of this laptop kit and then take a copy of it so paste it over here and then give it a so it's ten dollars is coming I click on add so once when you add it is a kit actually Kit is not shippable. The laptop is shippable. The carry case is shippable, whereas a warranty is only billable. So, click on add. so it shows all the three components over here. If you click on the more, now, you click on the more it will now show you the components what are there. The, the three components. So it shows you the laptop kit. Even though every item is having $10 each, the prices of the individual components will not be contributing to the kit's price actually. So only one price will be coming. The remaining item, even though they have a price, they will not be getting rolled up to the top. So click on that. So you go there, you go to this place, and then I will now change the line type actually. So now I have to go to the top, and then here I will now change the line type. <clears throat> line type, I will now make it as what generic process. So the line type is in the process. And then afterwards, I go to this place, and then I will now. From where we are going to ship it. I go to the supply. So the warehouse is 001 in the warehouse. It's a serial warehouse. So fine, let me submit the same thing. So click on submit, by which the order gets submitted. So a new order is now getting submitted here. 17395 is the order now. And then we'll now go inside and then have a look at it. And go to the action and then go to switch to fulfillment view. Have a look at it. 
and then click on the do number. You can now see that do generic is now going to fire actually because of my uh, order type actually. So click on refresh and then see this. It is now scheduled and then the next activity of reservation is going to take place. So it will schedule. It will be reserved and then it will be interface to shipping execution. Actually. So the first and second line will be interface to shipping execution, whereas the third line will not be done at all. So we have sufficient quantities also. I kept sufficient quantities in the inventory and so we don't have any problem on the stocking as such. I have done the refresh. I have done the collections as well as the refresh also so that everything is not readymadely available. If you go to the fulfillment, you go to the fulfillment and then you can now see your model icon is coming. And if you click on the icon, if you click on the icon, you can now see. <coughs> so the, the kit datum has got this many components over here. Fine. It is reserved and then it is not started at all. If you click on reserve now, it's going to refresh it. So you can now see it is not reserved. And then the first two lines will be interface to shipping execution. I'm waiting shipping has come now. But the final final activity, which is only a warranty, it has not started at all. The warranty has not started. So let us now go there, right click on the duplicate, and then we'll now go to the what's called the shipping execution, and then we'll now try to ship the product. So click on the favorites. And then you go to the inventory overview. Let us now try to ship the fee. The number is what? 97395. So click on it. You now go to shipments. And then you go to the manage shipment lines. 97395 is the sales order number. 97395. Make it as before that is sufficient. No need to give a date at all. And then click on search. 97395 is the one we are searching for it. So the first two are shippable. The second one is not billable also. Well, no, 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 not. So the laptop is coming. So what I will do is I will now select both the lines. And then let me auto create a shipment. So that in one shipment number, I can do the pick as well as the ship also. So since the ISF and UST, the initial ship from and then the ultimate ship to are same, ISF and UST. So it allocates only the same ship and number, otherwise it will be a different one. So since the initial ship from and then the ultimate ship to are same, it uh, provides the same ship and number, fine, click on it. And then let us now do the launch pick release also. Go to actions and then go to pick release. So we are now picking it. So it is now getting done now. Fine, go so click on it, save and close, and then come out of it now and then have a look at it. That it will be, it is in a ready release status. Now it will be staged actually. If you give a save and close, it will be staged. Now let us now perform the ship confirmation. So click on it. And then we'll now perform the ship confirmation. So click on ship confirmation. So it's now giving a warning on the weight and volume. Fine. Yeah, we are not given the weight and volume. This is required only for the transportation management. So we can ignore these warnings and then click on yes now fine, and then go ahead on this. Ignoring it. It is now ship. Let us now go there, save and close, and then come out of it, and then we'll now have a look at it. Look on the monitor process. We'll now go to the monitor process and have a look. So on the monitor process, we are going to have a look at it. Uh, so the system has now sent what managed shipment interface is the one. This interface, this has now spawned a concurrent called send shipment interface. So this is responsible for interfacing your shipping execution to order entry actually. So let us now wait for this concurrent to complete. So once on the send shipment, ah, okay. Send shipment interface, if it is completed, what happens? It will now be getting succeeded. It will be interfacing to order entry that what happens? It has been shipped actually. It will now decrement the reservation as well as it will now update the sales order as what shipped. So it will now uh, relieve the reservation, decrement the inventory, and then update the sales orders. All these things activity is actually doing some four activities. I forgot the fourth one now. It will now relieve the reservation. It will now decrement the inventory as well as what happens. It will be updating the sales orders. What shipped actually? It has now completed. We we'll go back and then see if I click on refresh. Now. So now you see the first two lines are shipped. The second line is not started. Now all the three lines will now begin to what happens is work now. Once one is a ship, and if you give not refresh, now. so the invoicing will now start actually. Now, after this getting shipped, then this line also will not begin. So you can now see that this line is also going to begin. <clears throat> so if you click on the main line, the invoice processing has to start actually. If you go to the orchestration plan, 
since it is already shipped. So now awaiting billing, it has come and it does not want the awaiting billing. So it does not want the awaiting billing. If you go to the fulfillment lines and then have a look at it. So if you expand it, click on the expansion and then see the bottom three ones. So you can now see that it is awaiting billing. So these two are shipped and then it has not started actually. Actually, uh, this one uh, will not be what happens uh, interface to shipping as well as billing also because one of the first line is going to be interfaced actually. That is what it means. So it has not started. So only the first line is eliminated to billing. And we don't separately build this at all. But in the AR invoice, you can see all the three components actually. It is not going to waiting for it. So what we do is we will now go there and then we will not run the what's called we will not run the auto invoice, import auto invoice and import. Import auto invoice the one which I'm going to run. So this program will now it has already reached the interface tables of AR. We are now going to bring it to the interface tables actually. So import order invoice. So we will now have a look at the order number. 97395 is the order number. 97395. So if you go there, and then we will now put the 97395 order, and then we will now import it. So for importing it, first of all, the receivables period must be open. The GL must be open. The receivables must be open, actually. And then the receivables must be fully set. But since it is vision, everything is fully set. So I have even shown you about how to set up the AR also. <clears throat> so import order invoice is the one. So which we are running it. And when, when you create our structure manually, uh, we used to set everything there. And then, uh, so once when the, everything is set actually, so it will now get created on the AR side. So import order invoice is the program. So which is responsible for what I was importing it to the waste tables now. Import order invoice one. So 97, uh, it's 97395. So the business unit is US1. And, uh, and then the transaction source is a distributed order orchestration. It is not contractual in the So choose the distributed order orchestration. Go there. We will now import it for our line. 97395. So click on submit. And we are now going to import it into the base tables of AR. So once we submit it. So once when the import is completed, it will be informing the feeder system that we have imported. So that information will be basically closing the line actually. The line gets closed. So once when you, uh, the, uh, what's called, uh, informing the feeder system, notify the feeder system is the concurrent which will be running upon completion of the order invoice. It will be notifying the feeder system. The feeder system is OM. So it will be informing that whatever it has now created successfully. And it will also run the execution report also. So once when the notify failure system completes, you can now see the line status is closed actually. The line status will be closed. In the orchestration log also you can see that it will be closed actually. It will refresh now. So we're waiting for the communication from the send now. So go that we want refresh it. So the input in order invoice is running actually. So upon completion of it, you can now see the notify failure system concurrent will be running actually. So now you can see the what's called the notify feeder system is now running now. So it has got succeeded. And then that will be updating the sales order line as closed. Actually. If you go there, click on it, if you refresh it, it will be line status will be closed. So the line status will be closed. So it is now closed and then it is also built actually. The status is now coming as built and then finally closed. Built and then finally closed. So invoice is built and then line status is now closed. It is now built and then of course it's closed. So it is the responsibility of the CSR, the customer service representative, to close every line. And apart from that, he has to even close the order line also. He has to close the order line also. If you click on then the fine. So he has to represent to the management about how many lines he has closed in a day and then how many orders he has closed. Because one order may have multiple lines actually. So this line is now closed. And then he has got what is now still closed. So if all the lines are closed, what he will do is he will now go there. He will now run the update close close percentage and this ESS job will now run. Update close sales orders, you will be running it now. <clears throat> so update or close sales orders, he will now run it for the header actually. 
and then the interval is zero. The interval will be zero. So go there and then I click on something. These are parameters submission now. I click on something. So it will be closing the header actually. <coughs> so that's running now. So update or close sales orders will be running. So upon completion of it, you can now see the header getting closed actually. If you go there, click on it. So it is now still in the browsing line is closed actually. And then if you click on refresh, the header gets closed. So it's now closed. So a CSR, a customer service representative has to inform. He'll be having a top management meeting in the evening actually. So if something line is not closed, he will now say where exactly it is. So it may be a, what's called a, a transfer and ship or a buy and ship or a make and ship or some other activity. So he will now report to the management about where exactly it is getting struck. And then so the management will now talk to the corresponding people. If they put the buy and ship, it will now talk to the purchase officer why the supplier is not supplied. Or if it is the make and ship, it will now, and they will now ask in the manufacturing section about what is the problem in manufacturing it. So likewise, what happens? Uh, they will be saying how many are closed is okay, how many are not closed will be the thing which is for discussion actually. Not now we'll now go there, take on it. So the auto execution report is also coming. Invoice auto execution report, invoice execution report is coming. So that one, we'll now have a look at the bottom. So click on what republish. So any report is republishable actually. We'll now go there, take on it. We'll now export to PDF. So you have a look at the report. It says how many lines have come open. It will say it has got invoice line is one number of invoice lines is three actually. Number of invoice lines is three. And then it now show, not shows much of a detail actually. So that is the report actually. Or invoice report. And three lines have been created. Close it. We will now go on and have a look at what in our existing. So we will now go there. So we will now go to the home icon and then we will now go to the receivables and then go to the invoices and see the transactions. So go to the receivables. Fine. Go to the billing now. And receivables billing, and then you will now go to the manage transactions and then have a look at the invoice. Get on it. You will now go to the manage transactions. In the manage transactions, I will now put the, the customer as well, computer service and this. And then it is 97395 is the one time. These two parameters we are going to make a query now. Thank you, Consulation. Right? Because this is a double star, is a mandatory field, so I'm not putting the customer mandatory. Thank you, Consulation. So we are putting the reference. So we got an invoice number. Fine. Click on the hyperlink on the transaction number. Actually, there's an invoice. You can now see that 10, which is not coming. So 10 is down there. So if you click on the view image, fine, it will not show you. Fine. This image will be customized by the technical team. Fine. Every company will be having its own way of uh, presenting the invoice to the customers, actually. So they will now put the appropriate values, the appropriate place, and then configure it, actually. Since uh, we are working on the Oracle's uh, ready-made vision, so it will be showing you the visions image actually. So $10 is the one time you cannot see the visions is now coming up to top now. So you can even print it actually. So you can print it as now showing all this. So it is now showing you the taxation also. How to maximize it. So this will be customized actually. Your company name the Tata. <coughs> Tata Telecom, Tata Telecom will be there, and there some other things. And then they will now customize the way in which it has to be displayed. Actually. So it is at $10, and then the total sales tax is now 0.9. I'm not sure. So the invoice part. So I thought that uh, the laptop components will also be shown over here, but uh, I don't know where it can be. Details. Fine, click on the details and then see. Fine, click on the details of this one. Click on the details. We'll now see whether we can see the, uh, the, the kit's components actually. So it shows you the other activities of invoicing only, but uh, nothing on the components of a bill lecture. So, 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 so I thought that it may be visible. Maybe you try to make an R&D fine so that you can see the uh, bills components or not. Right? There is nothing else on this one. And line information, if you click on the line information, and details is only giving you more information on the line actually. So if you go to the line information, <clears throat> the line information, it takes you to the line information. Nothing else is there actually. So this is the way it is being done much. If you go on the go to the actions, you can go to the to fulfillment view. In the fulfillment view, <clears throat> everything is closed actually. If you click on the hyperlink of it, if you click on the hyperlink of it, if you 
do the fulfillment lines actually. And then if you click on this number. So the component of a bill will never be passed on to AR. I was under the impression that at least you know, show the components also. Maybe it may be showing you somewhere, but I'm not exactly sure about it. Let's see this one. So go to the actions and I'm going to get this and let you do it. Uh, this thing uh, we are unable to drill down the laptop kit actually. So I forgot that we did that long time back. And so what happens is it is not showing you this. So go ahead and click on it. So here, now all the lines are closed actually. So once when the auto invoice runs, it was awaiting billing, it was shipped, shipped, and then it has not started actually. Upon running the auto invoice, import auto invoice, all the line status gets closed actually. And once one is completed, it will be getting closed. So that is the way it works. So this is on the kit. We will now go to the next one. We will now go to the desktop and monitor and then keyboard and mouse and then I'm going to add a warranty also. So I'll be adding what a laptop's warranty also. So here, I'm now going to ship this product only. That is not correct at all. If you ship the desktop and monitor, and without a keyboard and mouse, the customer can do only a ching chong bhajanai and nothing else can be done. So without this, we cannot do. So ship them together actually. So we will now see about how to make them on a ship set actually. I'll click on that. We are going to see about how to make it as a ship set actually. So we'll now add three lines now. Fine. One is what a monitor and desktop, the keyboard and mouse, as well as an extended warranty. So click on that now. And then we will now create a new sales order for this activity as such. Click on the create order on this. So we'll be creating a new order on this. <clears throat> So I'm find two browsers, I'm using it, but even that is not fast actually. So go there, drop it down, and then here I'm going to use what the US one business unit. And the customer is what onto the service and the end is one. If you want to it. And then I'm going to add three items over here. So it's come to the service and that's one. So we'll now populate the first item over here. So the first item is what? The desktop and monitor. Take on it. I'm not bothered about the quantity fine. All items price is one actually. So with which just one and click on it. And then I will now add the next item and keyboard and mouse the next the keyboard and mouse, I'm adding it actually. Click on it. So $10, the all items price is not coming up. I will now add the extended warranty also. It's only billable actually. Extended warranty, I'm going to add. Just billable. So click on that. So first of all, let me set the line types so that what happens, our generic process will now fire. Go for that. So here, I will now make it as what generic process. This is a generic process. This is a generic process. I get a save at this stage. So the lines are added actually. We will now put them into a ship set actually. Now go down. We are now going to put them on the ship set. And now go to the second tab region. In the second tab region. Now go to the supply area. I will now say we are going to supply to 001. So there is a serial arrows. Go down. So here the three lines are coming. So I don't know whether we have to put the supply for every line. Select it and then see. So it's common. Actually. So the shipment lines are common. And the supply line is common for all. So I will not drop down. I'm not going to put them on a ship set. Click on it. I'll go there. So drop down on the second tab region. Override the order line. And click on the override the order line. And then here, the ship set, I'm going to put so that. Click on it, drop it down. And then click on create. I will now say ship set one. So the line is having a ship set. Now you are not supposed to add all the three lines to your ship set actually. Only shippable lines must be on a ship set. They say that this line, which is a billable one, should not be added to a ship set, but it should be added to a fulfillment set actually. It is yet to come, it is there in EBS. The fulfillment set is yet to come. So once when it comes, what happens if we can even do it now? 
we will go to the next line after that one. We will now again override the order line. Override the order line. This time I will not create, but I will add it actually and drop it off. So the SS1, which has been created in the first one, will be coming back to it. I'm not going to add it. And click on OK. So the fulfillment set, once it comes, it goes. Otherwise, still the time, what happens? You can use this as. So we can use it. But uh, they will now soon bring the fulfillment set. In that case, what happens? The first two lines will be on a ship set. And then that th all the three will be on a fulfillment set, actually. So that way it has to be done. So I'm now adding it. Fine. It is a temporary measure, but uh, this works actually. Fine. Oracle says that this is not a correct way, but okay. Fine. <clears throat> so now all the three lines are added to a ship. First time I created it, second one, or what added actually. So everything has been added. So click on save now. Fine. I'm going to submit the sales order. So 9739 is the one. So let me submit it and click on submit. So we're going to submit the sales order. 97396 is a ship. So sales order. Fine. Remember, all the three lines are now in a ship set actually. <clears throat> so it will be progressing to avoiding shipping actually. The first two lines will be progressing to avoiding shipping. Whereas the third line will not be getting started at all. I'm not remembering the status with no seats. So go to the actions and then go to switch to food. So now you can see. Is extended warranty not started is coming and no more than one of us click on the orchestration number all three are in the same section and then they are given the same orchestration number so click on, so click on the orchestration now the scheduling will start actually so since i have sufficient quantities it will not be having any problem in progressing actually to avoiding shipping actually so it has not started So the first two lines have gone to awaiting shipping. The third line has not started at all. We'll now go there, and then we will now. Uh, we have to do one more setup on this. We have to do one more setup on this. Click on that. We have to do one more setup on this. So we'll now go to the manage shipping parameters. So go to the setup and then click on it. So click on search. It's called. Manage percentage parameters, manage shipping parameters. So manage shipping parameters will come. So here we have to make a modification on the ship set section. So we are going to see what is the behavior of the ship set behavior. So I will now go there and then I will now say error. So if the what happens if you don't ship it together, it will not allow at all. The ship set behavior is no error actually. So on the shipping parameters, what is wrong? Right. On zero, zero, 001. Right. Save and close. It is not done. Let us now try to ship it. Now. I click on that and then come on up. We will not ship it. We will now go to the what's called power view. And then I go to the inventory view. 973. Uh, what is the number here? It's called 97396. Click on it. 97396. I'm going to put it. Go to the management lines. 97396, I'm going to put in 973961. So make it as what before, and there's sufficient. No need to put in the each bank to search. So it will be coming up for you. So two lines will be coming over here. Let us now go there, click on it. I will now auto grade a shipment for the first line, actually. And then I will now try to ship only the first line, actually. So click on what happens, click on the shipment. Then go there. I will now pick it. So click on actions and then I will now do the pick release action. So we are now picking the first line action. So go there. So click on save and close. The which the picking is not going to find. It is not picking very properly. Picking will not be having a problem, but shipping will be having a problem. So if you go there and then try to ship it now, and click on the shipment. Will not try to ship only the first line. Will not try to ship only the first line. Actually. Click on the ship confirmation. It will not throw an error actually. It will not say inventory controls are not met. It is an error actually. So the ship confirm request failed because there are errors on the shipment selected for the ship confirmation. You cannot confirm the shipment because one or more shipment sets are incomplete actually. Shipment sets are incomplete. The weight and volume is okay, fine, but this is what the shipment set is incomplete actually. Right? That is why it is an error of the error. Actually. 
It is not allowing you to ship at all. So we'll not go there. We will not, we have to ship together actually. If there is no orders. Right? Go to the second line. I will not add to ship one. Okay, nine seven one nine six nine. Select it. And then I add to nine six seven one nine six. I am going to add. Second line. I am going to add to the same ship one. Six seven one nine six. So six seven one nine six zero one. So magnifier icon. I will not query for it. I will not select it. Then add. So this is also added to the same ship one. So we have to ship together actually. Remember. So is what. So go that. Click on it. We will now first of all pick it now. Fine. It is not a pick. Select the line and then we will pick it. So go to actions and then go to pick release. We are now picking it actually. So the picking is now happening now. Fine. Once it is picked, it can very well do it. Save and close. It will be getting stale. Now uh, it is still not yet done. Now fine. We will say ready to release. Make a search again for the number. We will see it will be staged. It is now released to arrows. I don't know why it's so now. Fine. It should not be done as this. Fine. Maybe. Whatever is it? It needs an inventory in charge intervention actually, and that way is not coming on space. So we'll now go there, click on it, and then click on cancel. We'll now go to what? We'll now have to manually do the pick confirmation. Maybe because of some errors, whatever is it? It is not getting staged actually. In this place, it is not getting staged. We'll now go there. Maybe we'll again requery. It may be taking some time actually. If I click on search. It can be taking some time actually. Yeah, it's stage actually. Otherwise, you have to go to the inventory and then fine. it's released to arrows and then stage fine. It's a two-step process now actually. Fine. It is now completed. Otherwise, you have to go there and then perform a pick confirm manually. But I was thinking that it is only interface to one point, but it is now taking some time on what I was updating the lines for us. It is now released to arrows and then it was on the stage. Now, if I go and then perform the ship confirmation, it will not do full yet. Go there. So click on ship confirmation, it will be getting done. So it's only giving a warning now. Right? The warning is on weight and volume. Right? No other warning is. So click on this and accept this. Warning. And then here, the one more that C1 is not shipwrecked. Now the sales order will be started to progress. Right? Click on it. This place. So awaiting shipping if you click on the operation. So it will be shipped, and then the third line will also start to progress. Since all the three lines are in a ship set, right? the third line has not started progressing. So it will now wait for the this line to complete now. So click on it. You now go to that. What's called monitor process. Right. Now go to the monitor process. And then see the send shipment advice is getting completed now. <clears throat> so the send shipment advice is completing. So upon completion of this, the line status will now progress to what shipped, and then the third line will also start to process for the invoicing. Send shipment advice is now running. You have to wait for this to complete. So once it is completed, we can now see these two lines will be shipped, and then all the three lines will be interface to billing. Actually, in the previous state when it was a kit, actually fine, it is not shipped, and then now the uh, what about the invoice processing will not begin now. Fine, so it will not start to begin. Previously, this line was never interface to AR at all. Once when you run the auto invoice, it got closed. Fine, not started to close, but now here it will be interface to invoice. It will be interesting. So it was waiting for this ships and these two items to get completed. And then once it is completed, the invoicing process will not begin. So it has to begin. Main orchestration plan, it says that invoicing has started actually. But if you go on them, see on this one now, <coughs> it has to go to awaiting billing actually. The invoice processing has started. It has to push it to the interface tables of AR actually. So all the three lines has to be pushed actually. So all the three lines has to be pushed. So it still says it's not started. Maybe everything will be put together in one go actually. In the previous case, the last line will never be interfaced to AR. Now you can see that all the three lines are going to awaiting billing actually. So we can even bill now. Right? So the billing is waiting for the shipping actually. But this is not the correct way. Actually. This is not the correct way. So what you have to do is first two lines you have to put it on the ship set, and then all the three lines you have to put it on the fulfillment set. Actually. That is the correct way. So Oracle says that uh, they are now bringing in the fulfillment set very soon. As of now, it has not come, or it might have come. I don't know how to use it actually. Fine. Make a R and D on how to put all the three lines on a fulfillment set in the line area. What happens if we have got only one ship? And ship set is there. Maybe it might have come in 22B now. We are in 22B. I think fine. they say during this year it will be coming. 
So if you go on and see the about application, right? it is now 22B. Now. So 22B. So they might have brought in the full print set. If you know about where exactly it is there, how to put it down. So please, uh, what happens? Uh, write to me at nana.app60 at gmail.com. I will now learn it from you also. So this is on the ship set actually. So we are now seeing the ship set. Now I have an item which is having a dual unit submitters. Now go on and have a look at the stock of it. Have a look at the stock of it. So I will now go there. I will now go to the inventory. Go to the inventory over here. And we will now have a look at the stock of it. So go there. Manage item quantity is the one. So paste this item over here and give it a click on search. So we have a stock in each. It is now measured in dozens also. Each and dozen we are measured here. So I will go there. So I will now go to the view and then go to the columns. Now my secondary quantity on end. Secondary quantity on end will also be shown here. It is now showing you in dozen actually. It is 8,333.333. Each is this, and then dozen is this actually. It shows you the quantity on the dozen also. So let us now go and then try to what a book a sales order in one dozen actually. So the primary is each, the secondary is in dozen actually. We will know how what happens with this yeah, sales order for one dozen actually. So I will now go to the manage orders. Let me create an order for one dozen for this item. So click on create order. Drop it down. I'm not choose the US one business unit. Computer service and vendors is the one. I will now paste this item. So we are given a dozen price of 100 and then the each price of 10 now. You know, click on it. And then if you drop down, you can choose the dozen also. So dozen I'm choosing it. My 10 will now become 100 actually. So click on one dozen and click on add. And add it. And then go there. Click, put the line and then change the line type to what generic process. And then here you go to the next one and then you're going to ship it from here. And go to the supply and populate the supply over here. So click on submit. So we are now submitting this. It is one dozen like number. One dozen we want to ship. So click on submit. So we are booking one dozen, whereas the primary unit submitter is each, the secondary unit submitter is in dozen actually. And remember, for each and every UIM, you have to have a price. The system will not automatically convert the price, whereas is the case in the EBS actually. So if you don't have a dozen price, it will not give the price at all. Every UIM must have a price as item level or all item levels. For all the levels, we have to have the price. Switch to full review. So we are given the dozen price also. So, if you go to the orchestration plan, it has just started now. And I'll wait for it to complete. So, it has been interfaced to shipping execution now. Let us now go there. 97397 is the order. Go to this place. 97397. I will now go to the inventory overview. From there, I will now go to the shipment lines actually. So manage nine seven three nine seven is the one. Nine seven three nine seven is the one. Right. Make it as what before. And then I click on search. So go there. So here, if you see requested quantity is one total each actually, it automatically gets converted into each. So in a dozen, what happens? It converts into each. So that is the biggest problem in the system actually. So let us say. If the primary unit submitter is a dozen, and then if you want to ship three each, it will now convert the three each into dozen actually. And then that will always be a mistake. Right? So even though we want one dozen, the system is now shipping on the primary unit submitters. Remember, the primary unit submitter or the shipment unit submitters. Booking may be different, but shipping is always on the primary. The requested quantity is told each. But it will not ship one dozen actually. And that is the problem. So they are going to address this problem, and then I don't know when they will do it. Right? So even though we booked in dozen, 
fine, it is now showing you in this place. In this place, if you go on and see this place, you, know, you go to the fulfillment lines. You go to the fulfillment lines. We want one dozen, whereas inventory says that only each is required. So multiplication will not give a problem, but division will always give a problem. So the units of measures of the item must be of least to common multiple. Now. The primary units of measures must be uh, least to common multiple. It must be LCM. Let us say if you're going to transact on grams, kilograms and tons. So you have to create the primary units of measures as only grams. And though you transact on grams, kilograms and tons. So multiplication will never give a problem. Whereas divisions will always, may, may sometimes give a problem. 10 by 3 is 3.333. There is an error actually. So here it is multiplying it on this one. So the reason is now getting multiplied. So it will now go there. Okay, fine. Go there. So click on actions and then go to pick release one time. You are picking 12 each, actually, not one dozen actually. We are picking one each. <clears throat> so the concurrent is now launched. Now go there. Click on save and close. So you can now see. So each is the quantity which has been picked and not one dozen of all. It picks up only on the primary units of measures. So go there, click on it. I will not refresh it. Click on search again. So it's now staged. I know that. So go on, save and close. And then we'll not ship it. We'll not save. So click on the hyperlink of it and then ship to each. Shipping is always on the primary. Ship can So give the no ship and then we'll now save and close and then we'll now wait for the concurrent to complete the send ship under to be completed. So once one is done, it will be getting interface to our entry actually. Go there, click on it. We'll now go to the monitor process and then have a look. So the send ship under is to be completed. So once it's now completed actually, we'll now go on and look at the sales order. So click on refresh. Click on refresh. Now say awaiting shipping. It will be shipped actually. It will be shipped. So click on the orchestration number on this. And then. So click on the orchestration number. There is no ship right. So if you see one dozen is shipped right. So it is not shipped right. And then in the sales order level, it will be one dozen. And then in the invoice also, it will be one dozen. But shipping alone is on the primary. So whereas your, in, your sales orders and invoices will be on the, what happens, the booking units of measures. They will all be on the booking units of measures, whereas shipping is on a primary units of measures. So both the invoice as well as your, uh, what's called your, your invoice and the order entry will be on the booking in, booking units of measures. Right. So this is a very one, the important one which you have to take care of. They are now going to address it. Fine. Uh, you must be in a position to even change the units of measures in the shipping area, actually, fine, that they're going to bring in. I don't know when they're going to bring in. Fine. Again, a bug has been raised, actually. So they are working on it, actually. It is not allowing you to make a change. <clears throat> now go there, click on it. So this is all completed now. And then I think I have made one discount. I will not see whether this works or not. I'm not sure about it. Click on it. Uh, Go to this place. Go to the product information management. I am also not very sure about it. Nothing. Let's we'll see. I have now defined the substitute for this item. Actually, I go to the product information management, and then I will now go to the browse items, and then I will now query this item. Click on it. I will now go to the browse items. <coughs> and then let me query this item. And I think uh, the discount, I think I have defined a disc, I uh, defined one. Uh, de remember, the substitutes can be defined only in the master or not with the child. I will now click on the hyperlink of it. And go there. Go to the relationship. And then here, we have a relationship actually. That's fine. There is a substitute relationship is there. Right? So go there. So here, the discount item is having a substitute item. I know that. So the discount and substitute items are mutually substitutable actually. So they are mutually substitutable actually. Uh, where is it? I click on the relationship. On the relationship. It shows you what uh, the two item is a discount item. So I am now I have come to the substitute item. 
So for the substitute item, what happens? The discount item is a uh, what happens? Substitute fine. Both of them are uh, basically substitutable. Reciprocal is also. So let us now go on and try to get a sales order and try to substitute. I will not see. On the shipping time, whether we can substitute or not, I'm not sure about it. So I will not make a check of it. Click on it. Let us now go there and then get a sales order. Discount and substitute items are mutually substitutable, actually. And click on it. Long go on the trader sales one. Use one. Not place this right one here. So it's one now fine. The discount item I'm going to add. Well, shipping, can I ship the substitute item or not? Will not make a check. So go to the first call. In this area itself, I will not make it as a generic process first of all. And then you go to this place and then provide the arrows from there. We are going to ship it. So that's it. And then, so submit the sales order. Click on submit. So nine seven three nine zero one. Go there and then switch to fifteen and three. So go there. Click on the hyperlink on the process number. And the acquisition plan. Wait for it to get completed now. <clears throat> now it has gone to awaiting shipping action. Let us now go to the shipment area nine seven three nine eight. The shipment area 978 before and make a search in this. <coughs> Whether I can substitute this item or not. So with the substitute item, I must be able to substitute something. So this one, save and close now. I will not come in over here now. So I will now click on the hyperlink on the item. Click on that. There is an information fine. Click on I now and that's my information available. <coughs> Specification structures attachment relationships is not well shown now. In the relationships, we have a what happens it now should take you to this place now and go directly. So whether I will be in a position to pick substitute item based of this discount item, and that is what my thought is. So manage it lines nine seven three nine eight is the one. It's very much possible in uh, what's called uh, you were just now. Take that before and make a search. So, but there is no hyperlink at all coming out here. Let us know do one thing. We will not try to change the line on the order itself. The order itself. Go to the frequent lines. And go there. So the item item number is coming. Go to the actions and then go to edit. Whereas in EMS, we can very well change the item and the order. It will now prompt you with what is the substitute available for. Only the warehouse and supplier can be made. Fine. There is no such thing for the item at all here. Maybe some other place we can do it. Fine. Make an RD on this. Fine. In the is very we can on the order entry, it will also what is the substitute available on the bottom actually. It will not show you there you can do it. But here it is not allowing you to change here. So it's not allowing you as well as in the click on the item details, you must see whether anything is hyperlinkable. It's great actually. Maybe there may be some other process to change the item. I don't want to ship it, I don't want to I want to what happens the book only the substitute item. Right? Booking also is not allowing. And then shipping also it is not allowing. The shipping area also is not allowing. So is there any edit available here? Let's see, there is no edit available. So if you give a save and close also. <clears throat> so here the line is now coming from here. There is no such actions. Actions and then auto pre shipment after shipment. I don't find anything to edit this line actually. So whatever has come over here. Can only be shipped actually. If the item has got a hyperlink, also then it's okay. 
So if you click on the inventory details of this command, it shows you the inventory details. You have to ship it from this place. That's all. Nothing else. So the item, if you click on the what, 